Today we aim to synthesize the ubiquitous compound potassium alum dodecahydrate from common aluminum foil. We're looking to begin with 0 0.500 grams plus or minus 50 milligrams of foil. The most important thing is to record the exact mass of our foil for later yield determination. We'll cut the foil to improve surface area to accelerate the next step in which we dissolve the aluminum metal. The starting mass of aluminum foil is 0 0.499 grams. We'll use 3 molar potassium hydroxide to ionize our metal. KOH is caustic, extreme care should be exercised. We'll target 13.0 mils, plus or minus 0.5 mils. When working with such a caustic chemical, it's best practice to use a secondary transfer vessel, such as a beaker, to eliminate undue risk. Here we've measured 13.0 mils. This reaction step evolves H2 gas, so we will perform it in the hood. We'll stir with a glass stir rod, ensuring all of the metal has dissolved in our solution. The resultant solution is dark with impurities which need to be removed before progressing with our synthesis. To filter the impurities from our solution, we'll perform a Buettner filtration step. A filter flask will be secured in a ring stand to eliminate risk of toppling during filtration. We'll then attach a vacuum hose from the house vacuum to our flask. The vacuum adapter goes next which is a synthetic rubber gasket which ensures a good vacuum during filtration. On that goes the Buettner funnel, and in the funnel goes a piece of filter paper. We'll turn the house vacuum on and wet the filter paper with DI water to reduce solution loss during filtration. I'll then pour our solution slowly in the center of the filter paper, careful to ensure the liquid never reach the edge of the filter paper. As a result, our impurities are collected in the center of the filter paper and our filtrate, which is the solution in the flask, can carry on to the next synthetic step.
we will now transfer our filtrate to a 250 ml beaker, which we will consider our reaction beaker. We'll now react our filtrate in our reaction beaker with 4 molar sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is very corrosive and extreme care should be exercised. We'll target 22.5 mils plus or minus 0.5 mils of H2SO4. We actually measure 23.0 mils of H2SO4 for our reaction. We'll then slowly add our H2SO4 to our filtrate. Immediately upon addition, a large white precipitate forms in our reaction beaker, which requires my attentive stirring and additional additions of sulfuric acid. I apologize for blocking this view. You may now see that our reaction beaker contains an opaque solution of our alum precipitate. We will now heat this solution until it's completely dissolved. We will avoid boiling our solution. Now that the solution in our reaction beaker is hot and clear, we'll remove it from the hot plate with beaker tongs and place it on an insulated pad. We'll collect a measure of 95% ethanol and cool it in ice. Additionally, we'll place our reaction beaker in the ice and add water to ensure contiguous thermal transfer, otherwise known as an ice bath. As the reaction beaker cools, the solubility of our potassium alum decreases until it crystallizes out of solution in an isolated solid which we can filter. We'll again prepare our filtration setup using the Buettner funnel. It should be noted, in this filtration, we'll be saving the crystals on top of the filter paper, not the filtrate in the filter flask. You can observe the white crystals of potassium alum at the bottom of our reaction beaker, which have been isolated from our solution. We'll again carefully pour the contents of our beaker into the center of our filter paper, ensuring no liquid reaches the edge of the filter paper. We'll use cold 95% ethanol to rinse our reaction beaker and retrieve the remainder of the potassium alum. Potassium alum has low solubility in ethanol, especially at low temperatures, which reduces the chance of it going back into solution, 
and passing through the filter paper. We may also manually scrape the remainder of the crystals onto our filter paper. Any material remaining in our beaker will reduce our yield that we calculate at the end of the experiment. You can see our solid isolated potassium alum on our filter paper. However, this product is wet and needs to be dried before a yield can be determined. We'll now transfer our wet alum product to a clean, dry evaporating dish. But before we do, we need to get an initial mass of the evaporating dish, which comes out to 43.169 grams. Now, as carefully as we can, we'll transfer all of the alum to the evaporating dish. It's important to note that this is a major source of loss. Any product left behind in the Butner funnel will reduce our overall yield calculated at the end of the experiment. We can now acquire the mass of our wet alum and our evaporating dish, which comes out to be 50.332 grams. We'll now place our sample of wet alum under a heat lamp, ensuring that it's not too close to the heat lamp, which might damage our product. After 15 minutes of drying under the heat lamp, we'll collect another mass of our alum in the evaporating dish. The mass after the first drying is 49.999 grams. We're looking for a constant mass, which would indicate that all of the water has been driven off of our product and it is dry. So we'll continue to dry in 15 minute increments under the heat lamp until the mass recorded is constant, indicating all the water has been driven off. The mass of the alum after the second drying is 49.578 grams, so we'll return it to the heat lamp. After another 15 minutes, the mass of the alum after the third drying is 49.364 grams. The mass of the alum after the fourth drying is 49.302 grams, so we'll continue to dry our product. Finally, after the fifth drying, the mass of our alum product is 49.301 grams, indicating it is dry. Best of luck completing the lab with your group. Ask your instructor if you have questions.